Payne Stewart legacy lives in the heart of many and his golf swing is recognized as one of the last classic swings on tour. The world lost Payne after his death in 1999 at the age of 42 shortly after his second US Open title. As the winner of three majors and 11 tour events, he has earned his status as one of the greatest swings in the history of this game. Today we will diagnose his cause and effect and take a deeper look at an effortless motion modeled after some of the greats of the past. If you find some enjoyment or get some education out of this video, Video, please support us by liking, commenting, sharing, and even subscribing as your support helps us send finances to the Heal the Hood Foundation in South Africa to help get golf in the hands of low income children. But enough of that lag putt. Let's get ready to diagnose the swing of the great Payne Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, Lion Golf Academy, welcome back. We have Payne Stewart on the screen. Left side, we have a driver. Right side, we have an iron just to see how he moves for each particular club. Now, Payne's cause and effect, you will actually see it from the top of his position on the way down, but it will also stem from the way he sets up to the golf ball and his initial takeaway. So let's take a look at the setup on the left side of the screen. We have tall legs bending from the waist forward. We see the angle between his spine angle and his lower plane line pretty close to that 90 degrees. And nowadays, the tour players are at 90 degrees with the generations before had a little taller setup which did not require as much tilt and turn right side of the screen with an iron we can see the hands and the chest are ahead of the golf ball when you talk about the angle and we're going to draw a line where his club head is connected to the left side of his shoulder and this is very important because he has to make a compensatory move on the downswing to realign everything to that golf ball we're going to leave that line where it is left side of the screen let's just take a look at the initial takeaway we can see those hands riding up that lower plane line and what you'll notice is look at the back of his right hand it's not rolling open it's just basically going along with the turn so this is a really nice one piece takeaway he's keeping that set angle at the start of his position and he's maintaining it till about halfway and so what you're looking at this is where we see that club pointing left of the target when it's halfway back there's no right or wrong it really depends on your body's motion and the abilities to do this we see those shoulders are remaining pretty level to that initial spine angle and we see the back brace line he is bumping that right hip a little bit further back to make the room to make this nice one piece take away and not engage his arms and hands right side of the screen let's take a look at that same motion we see that again beautiful one piece takeaway we don't see much change in the angle between the club head and the hands let's just go ahead and freeze it there and we see that there is a slight angle change between that and we see that angle change here from where it was at about 180 degrees it is getting less but this is a very wide one piece takeaway we don't see much shifting over that right brace line as this is just coiling around his center okay let's keep going back this is where things start to take a little bit of a diversion based on this initial takeaway now because he's held that angle for so long he's definitely widening his arc his arms now have the room to clear and go much higher than they need to based on his setup his shoulders however have done a really good job of staying true to that spine angle however he has still done a great job staying in his initial spine angle we can see this left leg really breaking down to allow that extra turn with his hips so he has a lot more turn with his hips than modern day players where they try to restrict that lower body and increase their x factor and the x factor is a separation between the hip turn and the shoulder turn let's go to the right side of the screen we can see that same motion even though this is with an iron we see that left hip breaking down to allow the turn of the lower body and in essence when you turn the lower body you are also able to turn the upper body a lot more now you can see at the top of his swing is a little bit of the excess wrist set motion a lot of this has to do with momentum you think about how wide he took that club and how he held that angle fairly straight for so long in the initial takeaway as he is now hinging his wrist that club head develops speed and it also starts to weigh more so that weight pulls his hands back further in relation to his shoulder turn let's look at that turn and we can see how that club now has crossed the t now in modern day players they're probably looking to get that club about here specifically with an iron so we can see how much more he has to work with now, now obviously this is where he develops some of his power it also requires a lot of timing to get this down packed and let's talk about another possibility of why that club is getting further back if you remember where he set up with his golf club it was leaning forward and connected to his left forearm now if you take a look at the t based on the connection of where it was it is pretty close to that tee this is one of those cause and effects by getting your hands ahead that club head will try to find the center point which is basically perpendicular to where it's set if you take a look at where i believe he should be set up you can see his club would probably be in that same region here because it will be through his shoulder tilt this is one of those cause and effects that you have to start looking at when you set up for a golf ball obviously this man made it work extremely well and we're not saying it's bad at all but for you as the amateur when you start copying these swings and don't understand what you are copying 
copying just because it looks a certain way doesn't necessarily mean it works for you so keep a lookout for that let's go to the left side of the screen now and let's take a look he is still in the spine angle he's doing a really good job of just turning you can see the spacing between his right hip and that right brace line so he's done a great job of turning he does have a left lower knee than his right knee so that tilting is going to cause a little bit of concern but he does a great job of reconnecting this on the way down let's go to the left side of the screen now let's take a look at his triangle now the triangle if you draw a straight line down that's basically where the arms are going to try to go down okay so let's see if we can follow this along we're going to put that golf ball connected with his right shoulder now the goal for him is to get his lead left arm to match that at impact so we can see how we're already off because of the hands nice and high there's more manipulation to be had he has to sort out this knee tilt so you can see the first move he gets that knee to go left and on the right side of the screen we can see that knee going left to get to that impact line but what this will do as well is it delays his hands you see his left forearm still has to get down to that at impact so he has another option he can either reroute his hands further but he doesn't have much room because he's so tall so the other option is to shaft hump and this is where he starts to lose his spine angle on purpose to reroute the arms and we'll see here look at that so he started to lose his posture and what that does is it straightens up his lower body and his upper body but look at where the left arm is now it's matching where it should be and at right past impact it is perfectly on both arms are right on there so when you have your hands set high you have to figure out a way to get your hands down and change your triangle to the right position so if we go right before he strikes the ball we can see there's his triangle now and if you connect him he is pretty close to where his triangle should be based on the top position so this is what i caution people when they start emulating tour players unless you can figure out how to compensate that it is going to be a very hard struggle for you, you can see his spine angle is definitely higher and what that does is it causes your arms let me draw a little stick figure here so if my spine angle is here at impact i'm going to have a much steeper plane but the moment i raise my spine angle my plane will flatten out so he is flattening out his plane by shaft humping the golf ball once he strikes the golf ball we can see look at that new spine angle look at how much he's come into the golf ball he's definitely not staying beyond his back brace line like most modern tour players do and he comes on through but take a look at where his arm is his arm goes right through that top plane line where it should which gives him this unique finish he looks a little trapped with his arms but that's because his arms are still trying to go left while his body's going right so everything compresses past impact you see a lot of looseness in his lower body and this is where he got the, the power from so right side of the screen let's take a look at that action now that we know what's going on as he strikes down to the golf ball we can see he's carrying that down this is probably where he starts to shaft hump a little bit but here's a cool thing if you take a look at the line straight from the golf ball up we can see his hands have met that line and look at the club angle so look at all this conservation of angular momentum he has established it is close to 90 degrees within one or two frames and this is how he was able to hit the golf ball so far and without violently going at it and you take a look at because of that shift going left look at how far that golf ball is now on his right side of his body his whole body is ahead of that golf ball essentially his hips are ahead most of his shoulders are ahead his head is almost ahead as we strike that ball we're gonna watch those hands one two so you can see the lower body and the upper body don't really do much from this point he just gets those hands to rock under by tilting slightly and releasing all that storage up energy once he goes through he gets that left side nicely look at the right hand over the left a lot of hand action and he needed that hand action because he delayed that release so much while his body was compressing into the golf ball not giving enough room and he has to flip through to strike that golf ball coming on through you can see the lower body is definitely working overtime here upper body staying back so he found a way to make this work i would not recommend trying to copy the swing as there's so many moving parts as you can see but it is definitely a classic timeless swing that will probably go down as one of the better ones in the past 50 years just because of how effortless it looked and how repetitive he made it but it comes down to his talent hand eye coordination work ethic dedication blah 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 so unless you have all that stuff don't bother trying this but this is a great cause and effect video that i thought you'd get a kick out of if you like that hit that like and subscribe but other than that i will see you next time Ferris and greens Thank you.